Okay, today we're going to compare manual transmissions. Going to compare their sizes, how they fit, uh, small block Chevy and LS. And right here I've got T56s, LT1, LS1 style, T5, NV3500 two wheel drives, an SM465 four wheel drive, and a ZF6 four wheel drive. I'll keep this video short and to the point so you can get the uh, information you need. Okay, let's start off with the two-wheel drive stuff here first. Okay, the car transmissions here. Um, they're all 27 spline, or 26 spline input shaft, 27 spline output shaft. Uh, all that stuff is interchangeable. This T5 here has an old big block bell housing on it, and that's the key to making it work with an LS. Um, you have to get a big block bell housing because you need the 12-inch uh, flywheel to fit and the 168 tooth 12 inch flywheel um, you can get a big block clutch for it uh, use the hydraulic throwout bearing there's a bunch of places that have retro kits you just put one stud in there um, or actually what I'm going to do with a blazer I'm going to use a fork here you could do the same thing with one of these setups uh, so this would work for like any Muncie 4 speed or uh, you know these Tremec 5 speeds that kind of thing they take a 27 spline clutch and they also take the truck pilot bearing uh, for the LS, which is further from the front of the engine. Uh, it's the closest one to the friction face of the flywheel. And then there's a deeper one for the LS style. So you can see that LS six speed, the input shaft sticks out a long ways. For the LT1 style, you can see it's basically flush. And then for these old small block ones, they poke out a little bit, but they're enough to fit in that truck pilot. You can see this truck transmission right here. It barely pokes out, and um, that's the pilot that it uses. Here's an idea of just the sizes of the transmissions compared to each other. You can see the 6-speed is a lot bigger than the 5-speed. Two six speeds basically the same. The uh, LT1 style is about a half inch longer. Or sorry, the LS1 style is about a half inch longer than the LT1 style overall. I'll put up a chart here that shows the overall length, the weight, the uh, the distance from the bell housing itself to the trans mount, and that way you can get a good comparison on how these fit. This LT1 style six speed was sort of the bridge between small block and LS1 style. So you can see they still have a hydraulic clutch fork here, uh, but it is actually a pull clutch, um, which is a little bit thinner, really expensive. And that was what they used before they changed over to this hydraulic throwout bearing setup. Um, and if you're curious, the LS style is a lot smaller than the 8.1 Enduramax style. The first hydraulic clutches like this SM465 and this bell housing looks identical to the one that was on my NV3500. or NV um, They have a hydraulic slave cylinder that bolts in here but it goes in the opposite direction as the Camaro one and it's still a push style clutch. Uh, but that's also easy. This one is easy to convert to an uh, internal throat bearing if you need to. These NV3500s here are also sort of a changeover because they were used on the 4.3 V6, which is basically a small block Chevy minus two cylinders, and also the LS. So the small block Chevy bell housing uses this hole, the LS doesn't. The LS uses this one and the small block Chevy doesn't. So that's that's why they have all the holes here. But this has the the same uh, same kind of uh, hydraulic throwout bearing. You know, the LS1 style Camaro stuff runs and pretty much everything now. And this is also set up for that short input shaft poke out for the truck input shaft bearing so these bolt right up to an LS uh, exactly the way the factory was intended you could buy all 4.8 parts and it bolts right up the issue with these strength wise they're probably a little bit better than a T5 even but you can see the shifter placement is way far forward uh, these are also a 32 spline output shaft um, so your drive shaft is gonna be a little different and it's a 10 spline clutch, which isn't a really big deal because you can just use the truck stuff itself. But uh, the shifter placement 
proved to be an issue with mine. Um, in my Beretta swap, the shifter placement itself was the main reason I ended up going six speed instead of using that cheap five speed. So these T5s, I've seen a lot of those are going for like 800, 900 bucks now, which is surprising me because they're not, they're not exactly super strong. These NV3500s, uh, they go for a lot cheaper. You can get those for 200 bucks, 300 bucks almost all day long. Um, I mean, the six speeds go for friggin' two, three thousand bucks these days. Um, but uh, the NV3500, if it will fit for what you're doing, it's 15 and three quarter from the bell to the shifter. Um, if that will work for you, you can build a remote shifter like I was thinking about. Um, it's a cheap option that would be pretty decent. There's an S10 version of the NV3500, uh, which has the shifter a little bit further back. I'll plug in here, somewhere here, uh, how much difference that is and how much closer it is to like a T5 or T56. Um, but they only came in S10s, but you can get them uh, two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. Interestingly enough, all of these full-size truck transmissions are just under 16 inches from the bell housing to the shifter itself. Uh, so in that respect, they're all pretty much interchangeable. Um, the ZF is freaking huge. I always thought my uh, T56 was pretty big back when I swapped it from a four speed, but the ZF dwarfs it. That thing is massive. Uh, the T56 is 135 pounds. The ZF, I didn't even, uh, didn't even weigh because I figured that thing would probably break. Um, and the SM465 is also a heavy bastard. Uh, I'll have to, I'll have to Google what those two weigh and I can put that in here too. From the measurements I took though, you can take one of those ZF six speeds. Uh, they only came behind the 8.1 big block and the Duramax. Um, but you could put them behind an LS. So I checked this flywheel here. This flywheel is actually a small block one, but I know, uh, small block and big block 12 inch. Uh, clutches are interchangeable and I stuck this ZF Stuck this ZF pressure plate on there and everything lines up So there should be no issue the input shaft on the ZF is huge compared to these other so they're both 10 spline This is little 10 spline That most everything runs same thing like it's exactly the same as this SM465 um, that is a massive 10 spline. Uh, so your clutch kit is going to have to be for a ZF, but you'd have to order the uh, LS1 Camaro flywheel and it should work fine. If you're doing one of these NV3500s though, you don't want to use the LS1 Camaro flywheel with these. You want to use the 4.8 flywheel. The only other hurdle to using one of these ZFs, uh, if you're putting it in a truck that had an LS in it, or just anything, um, the transfer case for these is a 29 spline and I think, uh, 26 or seven is sort of the typical one, uh, for like half ton stuff and then manual transmission or 4L80E, any of the heavy duty stuff was like 32 spline. These are a 29, but they're a huge 29 spline. And the only thing that fits them is uh 8.1 and Duramax. That's it. So Usually the price of those transfer cases is pretty high uh, because there's not a whole lot of them out there. And they had that pump rub issue, which means a lot of good trucks ended up needing new transfer cases, so uh, the prices are up there. Most of these two, most of the trucks of this era, um, the ones with the manual transmission came with the floor shift transfer case, but most of the trucks of that era are a push button. Uh, so you'd have to figure out how to switch that or find one of those floor shift ones, which are which are harder to find. That's a 261 XHD. The push button ones are 260, 263 XHD. If you uh, have a truck and need like that more forward shifter position, but you want to run a six speed, there is a kit actually uh, to change your shifter to this location up here. And at that point, it's pretty close to where you need to be for the truck stuff uh, and make you can make that work. Another thing I did, uh, since the fitment was pretty tight, uh, putting that new tunnel in the Beretta. I took the skip shift solenoid Still on this one here Took the skip shift solenoid out and just put in a plug. It's an M20 1.5 I think and uh, it's o-ring so not a big deal to get it sealed back up Okay, I think I covered most of what you guys are gonna want to know 
Uh, if I miss something, drop a comment, let me know, and uh, I'll see if I have an answer for you.